asked me, where are they? He said, they are hiding in such and such location. Truly, the soldiers of Hajjaj went to that location and they found the two young men and they brought them. The Hajjaj looked at this man, he said, why, why, have, why did you tell me the truth? You knew I was going to kill them. He says, because my two children are less important to me than breaking my promise of not lying to Allah Jalla Jalalu. I would not lie to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Notice. So the Arabs have, even before Islam, and after Islam of course it was reinforced, they had this character, okay, in the month of Shar al-Haram, the sacred month, no weapons shall be, shall, shall be carried, nothing, no blood shall be, shall be shed, period. It's a month of peace, okay. Asbab al-Nuzul, al-Shahr al-Haram, bil-Shahr al-Haram, wal-Hurumat al-Qasas. What's the Asbab al-Nuzul? Asbab al-Nuzul are simple. And Nabi al-Azam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the sixth year of Hijrah, we wanted to do Umrah with the Sahaba, Allah alayhim. So they went all to Mecca to do Umrah. That was in the month of Dhil Qa'dah. Of course, why do we call Dhil Qa'dah? Qa'dah from Yaqa'ud, from sitting. The Arabs used to sit in that month again, reinforcing the meaning that they would not fight, they would just sit, huh? and they would uh, sort of worship their idols, whatever they were worshipping. In that month of Dhil Qa'dah, in the sixth, sixth year of Hijrah, the Prophet وسلم, with his companions went to Mecca and with the intention of Umrah. It was in the month of the sacred month. All of a sudden, what happened? Quraysh came. Huh? They took their weapons, they uh, started throwing arrows at the Prophet Wasallam. they broke that, san that sanity or that, that status of that sacred month. Huh? Okay, you all know now, we don't want to go into this, but you all know that the Prophet Wasallam went back to, to Medina, and then he returned back the next year with that agreement that he would go the next year for Umrah for three days, and of course, the Muslims were allowed at that time when they went back the next year, they went back the next year in the same month, Dhil Qa'dah, to do Umrah, and the Muslims at that time with the Prophet Wasallam, they carried their own personal arms, only personal arms. Everyone has their own personal arm, they carried it with them. Huh? Al-Qur'an comes to say, Al-Shahr al-Haram, Bil-Shahr al-Haram. You, Ya Rasulullah, did not break the sacred, the sacred status of the month, the sacred month. They broke it, and when the Muslims went back to Mecca carrying their personal arms, that is just for that. Don't, don't feel, don't think that this is, you, you are the one who broke it. You are, that, don't think that you are the one who initiated the Muslims. Basically, this is to the Muslims, not to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You are, you are not the one who initiated this, nor you are the one who started this. But I want you to take, I want to take you to a little bit higher point in this. The Muslims were not pushing equally. What do I mean? The, when the kuffar pre prevented the Prophet ﷺ from entering Mecca, they threw arms at him and they fought him and they started a war. When the Muslims came back to Mecca, yes, they did carry the weapons in the sacred month, but they carried one, personal weapons. Number two, those weapons were for defensive, not offensive, like Quraysh did in the month before, in the year before. Notice, there's a big difference. Al-Quran comes to say this, Al-Shahr Al-Haram Bil-Shahr Al-Haram. Of course, now having Al-Shahr Al-Haram, the sacred month, the people of Quraysh were sitting comfortably. It was like a sort of a peace, temporary peace. What, why do I say temporary peace? Well, because the Jahiliya society before Islam, what, what, kind, what, was this, what kind of society was Quraysh? Quraysh was a society that was living basically on violence. They were living on stealing, robberies, the desert, that's, how they, that's what that was their life. The society of Quraysh before Islam, if you had people who have a job, a, a, a peaceful job, and this man has, uh, for example, people who do agriculture. There's not much agriculture to do in this desert, desert, but those who did some kind of agriculture, the society of Quraysh and the elite of Quraysh looked at them as, uh, those are men, what kind of man would do agriculture farming? Farmer? There must be a missing characteristic of manhood. Those are weak people. What should, what should the powerful people and the big people do? They should take their swords and rob people of their money. Huh? And the more of a robber you are, the more honored you are in that structure of that society. Notice, huh? this is the society that was before Islam. Uh, 
Al-Islam, when Islam came, looked at the society, and of course Islam came to reform societies for happiness, of course, and peace. Look at the society of Quraysh, a structure that is based on who robs the other, the weak is dead, or the weak is enslaved, and the rich enslaves the poor, etc., etc. This is not right. And the diagnosis of that society was two things. Number one, there's a lack of knowledge, and number two, there is no work. People don't work in Quraysh. There's no job. The job is robbery. Therefore, Al-Islam want to institute these two important things. Number one, At-Ta'lim, education. And Nabi Al-A'zam Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made it an obligatory, uh, uh, obligatory fard, basically, section on every individual, every accountable human being must learn, period. You must learn. Huh? Of course, Islam also emphasized knowledge. People, are they equal, those who know and those who don't know? All these ayahs in the Quran came to emphasize the need for acquiring knowledge, the need for knowledge, because uh, as in the hadith says, that the uh, uh, honor of the scholar is, uh, is uh, on the rest is like the honor, like the fadl, like the bounty of the Prophet Sallallahu on the Ummah. And of course, as you know, in the narrations that says one, one alim is stronger on the shaitan than 1,000 abid, etc., 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 all these things, basically pushing for what? For acquiring knowledge to rise, education, right? We always say, there is no, education is, price, is priceless, priceless. Priceless. Because those who know are not equal to those who know. And no matter how much education costs, it is very much justified. You think education is expensive? Try ignorance. Hmm? Right. That's the first thing. The second thing now, the Prophet ﷺ employed the, uh, the condition or the uh, uh, idea of war. You have to have a job. Huh? Not only you cannot just live off of other people, you cannot rob people and steal people's money and kill them and shed their blood. Not only you should stop during the sacred months, but you should stop all the time. You should have a job. You should be productive in your society. You should contribute positively to the society that you live in. This was the concept. And the Prophet ﷺ did not just say that theoretically. He himself rolled up his sleeves and went to work with his own honorable hands sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alayhi. Huh? And then also you see a sahaba, you see everybody now. Everyone rolled their sleeves and started working like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Lead by example to show them that actually having a job is not a shame. If you do agriculture, is not a shame. If you do farming, is not a shame. If you do this, is not a shame. If you're a carpenter, it's not a shame. If you're a shepherd, it's not a shame. The prophets, they take, they took care of the of sheep. They were shepherds. The prophets were carpenters, etc. And not, you're not more honorable than the prophets. Notice. And this is how the Sahaba, alayhim, went into this atmosphere of being productive, working, and acquiring knowledge at the same time. Hmm? What did that do to society? It's a revolution. This is, an, this is a, an educational revolution. This is a social revolution. It actually changed the entire society from a non-productive society to a very productive and positive society where people were respected.